Welcome back to another episode of Wrench. On today's show, we are going to continue to work on installing these Porsche 911 ST flares. Hey there and welcome back to the channel. If you are brand new, my name is Michael. Behind me is a 1969 Porsche 911 S. It was a race car. I'm converting it back to a street car, putting a twin turbo Subaru EZ30R motor in it. And today we are on part two of installing the vintage Porsche 911 ST flares. Now, if you watched the last episode, Dave Buzaglu from TRE Motorsports came by with this brilliant super ST hot rod where we took a ton of measurements off of. Because of those measurements, we decided that we had to hack the front flares in half and cut a 40 millimeter section out of them. I have to do the same thing on today's show to the other side. So that's gonna be the first thing I try to accomplish on this episode. And then the next thing I wanna do is, oh wait, what's that? Oh, this? Oh yeah, this is the brand new wrench duffel bag available at wrench.com slash store. Perfect for long road trips or even short road trips. Perfect in the back of your 911, perfect at the gym, perfect to put whatever you want in. It is a nice piece of quality craftsmanship and every garage owner should own one. Now, in addition to getting the front flare installed, I have the rear flares already tacked on on the outside of the body. So what I'm gonna do is the cut and butt, I'm gonna cut through both panels and tack those flares on. So that is the hope for today's show. If I can get these rear flares fully tacked on and get this front flare done, then I feel like that's a great episode and it's a great way to spend my afternoon. That is going to be a few hours of work, so let's get right into it. To refresh your memory, or if God forbid you did not watch the last episode, this is where we left this. The rear flares have been tacked on the outside here. And then the front, this thing was cut right in half with this big 40, actually it's a 45 millimeter chunk, cut out of the middle. So I sectioned it, I re-welded it, I did a little bit of body work on it. It still needs a bit more, but then got it pretty accurately placed on the car. Now I've got to do the same thing on the other side and hope that my results are as good. All right, after a bunch of measuring, I've got a couple of tech screws in this flare. I think it's pretty damn close. I feel pretty good about it. So I'm gonna cut it in half. I'm gonna do something a little different with this one than I did with the first one. This one I'm actually gonna cut fully in half and I'm gonna use clamps to put them together because I think I can get the lip to match up a little better if I have it completely separated. At least that's my hope. A 
feeling really good here. Time to glue this thing together. So I've got the flare tacked together, and I gotta say it looks awesome. It looks so much better than the first one. I've got the top half done, so I'm gonna get the bottom half done now. looks really good and if you guys are freaking out by the fact I'm not wearing my helmet when I tack that this is a little Fitzy's fabrication trick what he does is he uses the gun itself to mask the flash it's really smart because it's easier to pay attention to this stuff without having the mask on on and off uh, but it works really well for these kinds of applications don't worry I'm not messing my eyeballs up Yeah, that looks friggin' awesome. Probably one or two more to get this thing totally dialed. Heat has made it overlap a little bit. Like at the bottom, it's kind of kicking down here a little bit. So I'm gonna deal with that right quick. So this gives me a chance to use a very special pair of pliers. These things are really interesting. They have a little U on the outside and then the pad is actually a copper pad. So what you can do is clamp your two pieces of metal together between these two and if there's a big gap, the copper will help dissipate the heat and it won't continue to blow the edges through. So this is like this perfect pair of pliers for this exact purpose. So here we are, I've got this little crack right here that I need to weld. And I'm doing it from the inside because it's a little easier to, to finish. You know, it doesn't, I don't have to do as much on the outside here. Yeah, that, that worked great. So here we are. This thing looks awesome. It is super smooth. The, the arc is perfect. Uh, I think it turned out way better than the other side. And I thought the other side was good. So... I'm gonna just do a little finish work on this. Same thing you saw me do yesterday, which is grinding, welding, grinding, welding, grinding, welding, just to make this thing a single unit. And then we can actually get to mounting these front flares uh, on the car, which is super ass exciting. All right, so for all of you guys that are like, dude, you gotta work on your welding. I got one word to say to you. Scoreboard. Yeah, let's look at that. Let's look at that together. Let's all ogle the fact that that is the welded panel, but you'd never know, would you? So there you have it. Yeah, uh, needless to say, this thing came out literally perfect. Like, this actually makes me feel better as a fabricator and as a body guy because it's like, damn, if I can do this, I feel like I can do just about anything. So. Super exciting to get this thing done. It feels great, looks great. I'm stoked. And now it's time to line it up on the car and uh, begin the process, hopefully of welding these puppies on, baby. All right, now that that is done, it is time to tack on the rear flares. And to do it, it's not that dissimilar to what you just saw, which is these have been tacked on the outside of the car. This one on the left-hand side is laying down really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cutting wheel and I'm going to cut here and I'm going to cut there and I'm going to make sure that this section, which is the most important part of the flare, is tacked in and welded. What I'm going to do is use the blade of the cutting wheel and come in at an angle and then slowly and methodically cut the inner structure away as I tack the two pieces together. It's great when you get it done and that whole inner structure falls away. It's really a cool feeling.
Okay, I'm about halfway through now. And what we've got here is really nice flush interface. And I'm about to hear, I'm not sure if you could pick it up, but there's a lip right here. And I'm just going in with this angle with the grinding wheel and then pushing each piece together and tacking it as I go. And what that's doing is giving me a nice flush seam as I work my way down the flare. This is the most satisfying thing that happens during this process, is when the inner flange comes out in your hand. All right, doodlies, we are one down, three to go. So we're tacked on. I ground these things down so I can see how smooth everything is. It's almost perfect except for the leading edge right here. And this is always a trouble area. It, it ends up wanting to V a little bit when you do these. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna body work this a little bit and cut these tacks off and see if I can get them flush. That's gonna involve probably removing the cooler from the inside, maybe removing the wheel, so I have enough leverage to be able to get a hammer in there and a dolly and like work my way on this side to make this smooth. But overall, it's awesome. I think it looks great. It's really cool to see it, you know, flushed out like that. And see some permanent hips go on this baby. All right, guys, one out of four done. Really stoked about how it's looking. I will finish the other three off camera in the exact same way and bring you guys back in as I do a, a final fitment on that first flare. I'll do a final weld, final grind, final dressing, hammer dolly work and that kind of thing and show you how I finish this. I will then of course do the same thing on the other three and we will have some hips. So thanks so much for watching. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you next time.